All right, in this lesson, we're going to make a little Mad Lib program, which is basically you ask the user for like nouns and verbs and people and whatever, adjectives and stuff like that, and you take what they enter and put it into a, a sentence and hopefully make something funny. We'll see. But the main focus is the idea of user input and variables, right? Getting input from the user, the noun, the verb, that kind of stuff, storing it in variables. Um, variables are just the storage containers, and then we can use those variables to put together our final sentence. Um, I've got some start code, which really just has the heading and some instructions, and uh, it just has stuff set up, right? I linked to my style sheet, and I am loading my JavaScript in main.js. Okay, so we've already done, okay, so main.js, I'm going to go madlib lesson. Now, we've already kind of looked at input with the uh, prompt. We haven't done it much, but I think I introduced it once. Um, the prompt function, where you can say, you know, enter a person. Um, boop, boop, there we go. And let's run this. And it says enter a person. And you can enter in, you know, maybe our principal, Mr. Olson. Da -da -da. And okay, but nothing happens right with that. I open my console, nothing happened in my console. It just ran this function, asked me the question, but I didn't do anything with it. So um, what I can do is I can store that um, in a variable. So we declare variables by going let person. Okay, that basically tells JavaScript this is a keyword let, and then person is the name of the variable. So let just says, hey, JavaScript, I'm going to define a variable and let's call it person. Now, for variable names, you want to make sure they're descriptive. They should be describing what they're storing. Um, they should start with a lowercase letter. And you're allowed to use numbers and underscores and letters, of course. OK, there's kind of some rules. You can't have spaces in a variable name, you know, like person. Uh, it has to be all together. You can go person one and person two, whatever you want. Um, but it should start with a lowercase letter and then be any combination of letters, underscores, like that and uh, and numbers so we're just gonna go person and then you can after you declare the variable you can assign it so the equal sign in JavaScript is the assignment operator it basically says hey JavaScript you made this variable called person right now if I were to console.log person notice no quotations right if I did quotations that's not a variable that's a string it's the actual word person and if I run this, da -da -da -da, I type something, and it just printed out person, right? But if I console.log person without the quotations, it looks up this variable and prints out its value. And if I run this now, you'll notice it printed out undefined, okay? And that's because when we I just declared the variable, I didn't give it a value. I didn't assign it a value, so it's undefined. But now if I take this console.log person and put it after the prompt this is now saying hey take that variable we declared called person and assign it whatever this prompt function returns okay so now when i run this i can say mr v and it now prints out mr v because that's what's stored inside of person i can actually access it from here as well in the console because it's a global variable visible on my web page okay now we can do this in two steps. We can declare the variable and then we can initialize it or assign it a value here. You can also do this all in one step. We could say let person be assigned. So you can declare and initialize it all in one line. And that's that's makes sense. We'll do that here. Okay. And then I can get other things. Let you know verb be assigned, prompt, enter a verb. Should be saying please, I guess. Oh well, noun is assigned prompt. Please enter a noun. It's good to be polite. Please, oops. Enter a verb. And please enter a person. Okay, so that now has three different variables and they'll store different values. Awesome. Okay, now what do I want to do? I'm going to add a comment here to say, you know, get user. Input. That's what I'm doing. Now let's uh, put together a Mad Lib string. So I'm just going to create another variable called message. 
And this message is going to be um, something like person and I verb the noun. Oh, person and I verb the noun. So person here actually needs to be replaced with the variable person. And then we go plus. So whoever the person is plus this string and I, then we need to do another, we need to end that string and go plus the verb and then add the string the plus the noun and plus our punctuation at the end. So we're building, basically this variable is going to be one big string that we're putting together. We're taking whatever's stored in person, we're adding this and I plus whatever stored in verb plus I should put spaces here so that otherwise they're not, they're not right together and then the now. Cool. And then once I have that message, we can output it by going, you know, alert, oops, message. So this is getting input using prompt and this is output using alert. Let's see what that does. So it's prompting me enter a person, LeBron James, Jones, LeBron James, Okay, please enter a verb, left, and please enter a noun, dog. LeBron James and I laughed the dog. I didn't really think that through when I was typing it out. Anyway, whatever. It's just a goofy thing, but you see how it took the name, the verb, and the noun and put it together into that message. Okay, now. Pop-up windows are great, but let's work with our web page here, right? I'd rather have um, places where the user can type in stuff and then we hit a button and let's make it an interactive web page like this. So if you go to our index.html, under the instructions here, let's have an input section. So enter a verb. So I'm just going to have, uh, maybe I'll do a paragraph for each um, thing. Let's just go um, person colon. And now we're going to introduce a new element called an input element. Okay, and, and the bare minimum is actually just saying input. Okay, and if we save this, oh dear. Okay, da 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 da. Okay, so we need to. I'm just going to comment out the script right now. I don't want to run my JavaScript. I don't want that pop up windows happening all the time. So you can see per person, and then there's an input box that you can type stuff into. Um. You can actually specify what type of input, but the default is text, which is what we want. And often we give this input an ID, and I'll give it the ID person. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's go. Person input, just to make it clear that it's the the input element, right? And then what else can I do? I can go. Um, what's next? Verb. Verb like so, and then do an input element with the ID. Um, verb input like so and then we can go now and then input ID equals now and input again notice input does not have a start and end tag it's just a start tag and the ID goes inside of that start tag all right if I save this now it does some weird formatting stuff um, uh, you know let me quickly change that if I go to my settings there's this thing here. See, I have this set up here. It, for, it does this format on save that I set up. Um, hold on, let me drag. How come I can't drag this over? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, whatever. This unformatted here is basically saying I don't want to format um, input elements. I'm going to separate that by commas. Because um, it's automatically putting these inputs on, on a new line. And I don't want that. Let's see if that fixes this automatic. I kind of like how it looks like this. Save and, oh, whatever. Okay, um, I give up. Now, in terms of what to do here, uh, well, let's just see what it looks like first of all. Ah, okay. You know what I will do though, actually, is that's right. We're gonna put each in a paragraph. So I should start a new paragraph here and end that paragraph there. 
and start a new paragraph here. And there's an end paragraph right here. Save. There, that looks better. And I think that'll now put it on its own paragraph. Enter person, verb, and noun. Click the Mad Lib button. Awesome. We need a Mad Lib button. Okay, so that's part of the input. I'll put that in its own paragraph as well. Um, ID equals Mad Lib button. And we'll say Mad Lib. Okay. Cool. Hit the button. Nothing happens. All right. So what I'll do now is let's have a section down here for our output. And I'm just going to have an empty paragraph. I'm going to give it the ID output. All right, that's where I'm going to put the final sentence, that Mad Lib sentence. Cool. So these are these input elements. And really easy. Um, all we have to do is instead of prompt, all we do is we use this document dot get element by ID. So we don't have to ask that question anymore. And we're going to get the person input, right? We're going to select, let's close the user settings. We're going to select this ID, this input element, person input. And then we go dot value. Okay. And that gets the value of that input element. Input elements have a special value property. Cool. So again, same thing here, document.get element by ID. This time we want the verb input and go dot value. And then let's go document.get element by ID. Noun, oops, noun input dot value. So that should find these elements, get their values and store them in these variables. Then I build the message and then I alert the message. Let's just test that to make sure it works. So now I can hit um, Cinderella is the person, Cinderella. The verb is jump and the noun is tree. No! Oh, of course. Well, um, what am I totally forgetting? that in my HTML, we're not actually running our JavaScript because I commented that out. So it's going to run this. And this will definitely not work <laughs> because blank and I blank the blank, right? What happened here? Basically, um, this script tag ran as soon as the page loads, right? Like it loads the page and runs the script tag. Well, if I'm trying to get the value of these input elements, well, they're empty, right? So I need to make sure that I trigger this code in an event. And you know what? I'm going to do a part two on this video because I'm running a little bit up to my 15 minute limit here. So yeah, let's do part two on this. We'll add the event on here. And once we click, then we'll get the elements, right? The value of these input elements, make the message and output it. All right. Uh, hopefully this makes sense so far. We'll review some stuff in the next video and finish this off. All right. Take care. See you in a bit.